So I'd like to bring you along today as I do a little bit of a marksmanship test, practice you might call it, because I've got 80 rounds loaded up for my AR-10. I'm fire forming a new batch of Lapua brass. And some of our recent videos, we've had a lot of really, really good luck with the 168 grain Sierra Match King. I've got 50 of them loaded up with AR comp, which is primarily what we're gonna be shooting today. And then some others with IMR 4895, which also, also was uh, a good shooting combination. So what I wanna do with this ammo is I wanna compare my standard setup with a front and rear bag on a bench and compare that group to what I'm capable of with a bipod. I got this Atlas bipod a while back. She's a beaut. So we'll try the bipod. Well, after I bought this bipod, an extremely generous viewer said that he had some of the, the spike feet and a monopod laying around. So I've got a monopod. So this will clamp on the back and this takes the place of our rear bag. So I wanna try bipod and monopod. And yeah, like I said, I've got spiked feet, which might be the smart choice for me for everything. So even my bench has got a plywood top. It's not a concrete bench. So these spikes would probably do well on the plywood as well. So you get the idea, that, that's what I wanna test. So standard bags, bipod with a rear bag, bipod and monopod, and then I wanna shoot some groups prone. So prone with the bipod, and then maybe prone with the bipod and monopod just about every scenario I can think of and see, you know, see if we see any difference in the groups. Now this is not a which style is best sort of competition and I don't wanna pretend that it is. It comes down to the shooter, what they're comfortable with and what they're good at. So really the best outcome today would be that all the groups pretty much look the same. That's what we're hoping for. So that's enough yapping. Let's, uh, let's get out to the range. Okay, so I wanna start with the front and rear bag setup. This is the setup I normally use anytime I'm using the Magpul PRS stock, which is what I use for the AR-10 like this and also the AR-15. This has been my standard setup for a while. It's Caldwell front rest and I am using the forend stop. I've got the forend stop set up so the front of my hand guard will hit it. So every time I set up the front of my forend should be sitting right up against that. So that should put us in the same place every time. The front bag on this is a protector model leather front bag. It does kind of grip a little bit more than I would like on pretty much all of my AR handguards, but you know, most of them have some texture. They're meant to cause a little friction, right? So, but this one's pretty good. I've got it worn in and it slides pretty good. The rear bag is also a protector model rear bag that has the Cordura ears and one of their wider ear spacings. There's kind of a little flat spot in the middle and the Magpul PRS sits down in there halfway decent. These Magpul PRS stocks come with a little cover that cover up that rear rail, but I've lost them, like all of them. I have two of these stocks and I lost them both. But this works pretty well, this particular bag. Almost got a notch settled and worn into it. And I think the, the stock sits in it pretty well and is able to you know slide back under recoil in a pretty smooth way. Now this bag's not quite tall enough. So I've got this little spacer under it that's covered in super soft leather that grips really, really well. So the base of the bag and this little spacer really stick together nicely and the spacer sliding is not really an issue. I would like to get a taller version of this bag, but between the bags I've bought and the ones I inherited from my grandfather, I've just got too many bags and it's hard to justify buying another one. And this works out pretty well. So that's our first setup. The target's at 100 yards. Shot marker electronic target system's up above. You should be able to watch the group size come in as I shoot it in the top right hand corner. And assuming I don't screw up my camera setup, I should have a target camera over there on the right. So I wanna shoot a couple rounds to double check our gas and to foul up the barrel. This is a clean barrel and check our zero and all that. So let's shoot at the far right dot and get comfortable before we start getting serious. Well, the bullet hit the paper, but it doesn't look like shot marker. There it is way down there on shot marker. There it is. So I was a little bit afraid of this. That gas setting I said I just used was with my other suppressor. So this new Silencer Co. Omega 36M, I think I'm getting a little bit more back pressure than I was. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Okay, so I've turned the gas down just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and shoot three more shots, make this a five shot group. That shot didn't feel that great. And I want to make that the last one of those I have today. If it doesn't feel good, just stop everything you're doing. Resettle. Restart your shot sequence, right? 
I want to be quick to do that today. Every shot counts and all that crap. Okay, good start. Looks like our gun's shooting. That was 0.61 inches. Okay, 10 rounds in the magazine. We're going to try not to stop, chat, react. Focus on shooting. Best groups I possibly can. Now, some of you might be looking at my suppressor right now and noticing that my suppressor cover just moved. You'll probably see that quite a bit today because it came loose on me in my last video on my pistol, so I'm a little bit paranoid. And the easiest way to check it is just to grab the suppressor cover and twist it. So that's what that's all about. Okay, here we go. Ten shots. Something I'd forgotten and I just realized. I've got a soft leather bag that's full of sand. Helps to relax my trigger hand a little bit, so that's what that's about. Okay, that's a pretty good start. 0.71 inches, maybe hoping for a little bit better than that. But 10 shot groups are no joke. That Was that the first? Yeah, so that, that one, so yeah, that one out there on the left was the first shot. Huh, I don't know, you know, good baseline. It felt good. Those felt like good shots. So what I need to do is put on my M-Lock adapter and install the bipod. So one configuration I'm not going to even bother shooting is with the front rest and the monopod in the back. The one that's kind of an odd combo I, I, if i'm in a situation where i can drag this big thing out i can probably bring a bag set up as well i would think plus i think it would be extremely difficult I, it would affect my groups i think because in this configuration the back is really a lot of what keeps the the gun stable so if it was kind of more teeter-tottery back here things are going to get pretty tough all right let me put on the bipod so i got the bipod put on and was starting to get lined up and was trying to decide whether to to go with the standard rubber feet here at the bench or to put on our spiky ones and i think i'm going to go with the spikes because this old weathered uh, plywood it is just sliding awful easy so i could either go grab a board which you can see the old remnants of screws there where i used to have a board but i want to see if the yeah i want to see if the spikes will work i think they might Nah, the spikes are worse unless i really want to dig them in there i'm going to go get a board and a screwdriver Okay, now I've got something to load up against and I've switched back to the re standard rubber feet. Like, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, or maybe you do know what I'm talking about, and you're saying, dude, that's cheating. Well, I don't want to shoot it otherwise. If I can't load it, I'll just shoot a front rest instead. This is not a bench rest rifle. This is an AR with a, a, I can't remember if it's a four or a five pound trigger. Just don't remember which one I've got in this particular lower. So at least four or five pounds of backwards force has to be counteracted with four or five pounds of shoulder. Now, whenever I've got something I can either dig my bipod into or push against, and I don't know, let's say I put 25 pounds of shoulder force into this thing, then I don't know what the numbers are. That seems like a lot, but whatever. I'm able to put enough shoulder into the gun to where the four or five pound trigger pull doesn't move my sight picture much. Or if I've got less shoulder into it and then I'm trying to pull the trigger, it can be hard to get stable, or at least it can for me. Man, my camera's so dark and it looks all fuzzy. I think I got something screwed up. All right, here we go. Bipod and rear bag, 10 shot group. A little bit of point of impact shift there, right? All right, let's see if that continues. How about that? Oh, I gotta brighten up my camera. We're just about blind, aren't we? Okay, that's a little bit better.
should probably keep the speculation till later, I guess. But it's my, my most basic question right now. Is, so is that shift due to shooter alignment or is it due to different forces on the gun? I don't know. All right, let's switch to monopod. If I move far enough out of the way, you might actually be able to see what I'm talking about. It installed quick and the adjustments seem really, really nice. I, I, this is brand new. I've never used it, which should tell you how full of crap I am, right? I just got done telling you how there wasn't any point in shooting it with the front bag because I knew how it was going to work. That was just a guess, but hopefully this kind of maybe gives you some idea of what I was talking about. I like the way this thing adjusts. Like it's pretty easy to make small adjustments and lock them down. Sweet. Let's load up, shoot a group. Another suppressor check. It's been tight every time I've checked, so that's good. And I'll go ahead and address it now. Some of you got, guys might be wondering on that point of impact shift. Maybe my M-lock adapter hit my gas block and I'm getting gas block interference. That's definitely not the case. I was very, very careful. You might notice the bipod's a little bit back from the front of the fore end. And that's exactly why. I was very careful about that. All right, let's shoot a group. Holy crap, that was a lot of work. All right, so obviously, with the rear rest attached to the back, you know, every shot, it moves, so it's a full reset. Yeah, so that, that was a lot of work, getting back on target, getting resettled, making fine adjustments every time. But man, what a handy little thing to have for varmint hunting, or just plinking, or anytime, you, or anytime you're wanting to get into a hasty prone position or something. Pretty cool. All right, let's get on the ground. Okay, so that was not good. That was harder than I expected. I think I'm just out of practice. Could not get comfortable. I've got five more shots of this ammo. Let's put the monopod on here and see. I'm thinking that it's so easy to adjust height with that monopod, it might make this a whole lot easier. Okay, so those last two groups, once I switched to prone, I was obviously running out of daylight. My chickens were running around. I don't know, things got a little bit hectic, but I learned a lot and I wanna take a couple more shots today and see if I can use what I learned. So when I first started adjusting the bipod for my prone position, I was immediately frustrated and it made me really miss the adjustments of my, my GG and G bipod. Cause the legs on this one are just, uh, you know, an analog slider. Slide it where you want and lock it down. Certainly disadvantages to this, but you have a lot of control. And with the Atlas, you have predetermined you know, slots here that you switch between. So there's a lot of space between those adjustments. And when that happens, your only option is to compensate at the rear. And the problem is that a rear bag is not a good place to make adjustments. You want it solid. You want it you know, packed down and stable. If you're having to squeeze it and play that game, your groups are never gonna be as good as they could be. And I, and I should clarify, like I'm, I'm talking about the very specific case of a guy who wants to come out in his yard and lay down and shoot the best groups possible. I don't really care about setup time. 
flexibility. You know, I, I'm, like a varmint hunter might need to set up and take shots 360 degrees. And that's a whole different set of requirements. Just talking about for groups, I want my rear bag as solid as I possibly can. And actually that's exactly how my setup would go with my gg and bipod is I would get my rear bag situated and get comfortable with it and then just adjust the legs up and situate you know the placement of the bipod and all of that afterwards. That's, that's my fine adjustment is in the front. Same thing with you know a standard front rest of course. So that's why that 10 shot group with bipod and rear bag was just it was awful. Or it wasn't bad like it wasn't much bigger than the others but just kind of eyeball testing like that's the worst group I think. But something magical happened when I was you know laying prone and switched over to the monopod there I had all of my adjustment. The fine adjustment on this is awesome. I guess I just hadn't taken a minute to sit back and think about what the purpose of a monopod really was. I thought it was just a portable poor excuse for a rear bag replacement. And it's really not like gives you a whole lot more flexibility. The adjustments are just about perfect like testing just a little bit ago like a, an MOA move was about like that maybe like a sixteenth of a turn. So it was a really nice and easy way to make fine adjustments. So that's why that last five shot group I think looks tighter looks better. It felt better as the shooter. And also whenever I was shooting the monopod on the bench if you remember I was talking about as I adjusted it the uh, the gun was kind of wanting to walk around the bench with the rubber foot hitting the plywood. Well that doesn't happen on my canvas shooting mat and wouldn't happen on the dirt. So that problem kind of went away. So it's kind of opened my eyes here a little bit to the purpose and utility of monopods in general. I will say I wish it was a little bit taller. I guess I could stack a couple pick rail risers. I think I've got some of those somewhere. Might, might give a little bit. Yeah I, I don't know but not all guns or chassis are going to put these in the same place. I think Magpul makes one or no who was that it was Magneto Speed or somebody weird makes a monopod that replaces your your grip which you can't even see there like a grip with a monopod hanging out of it. I might have to try one of those sometime. It's got me interested now like I kind of get it. There's still the problem that it's rigid and fixed to the stock right so under recoil it's always going to move as much as the stock. So getting back on target immediately is pretty tough. It, it takes a little bit more fine adjustments between shots than I would like. But it got me thinking like why does it have to lock in the down position like why not have it articulating down there so that under recoil it could just do something like that and then you just load your bipod back up and you're right back where you were. I don't know. I'm not sure. Can't really rem remove the mechanism completely or you won't be able to lock it in the up position. Oh, and I've got it in a got a little but button interference there don't I. So yeah I've got 30 more rounds of ammo. Same bullet we shot yesterday the 168 grain Sierra Match King but this time it's with IMR 4895 instead of AR comp. My original plan was to shoot the monopod and the rear bag again to get another comparison but I don't even think the rear bag is worth wasting the ammo. Like I, I, I don't have the adjustment I need with this bipod and a standard rear bag. I just don't. If I ever want to shoot prone with a rear bag I'll just use my gg and that has analog adjustments where I can fine tune exactly what I need. So the other thing I took the time to do a few minutes ago was adjust my cheek riser and try to get my shooting position for proper eye relief set up. And I, I think I should really move my uh, move my scope back one or two spots on the Picatinny rail to really be exactly what I want but I'm not going to do that. Once I'm done messing around uh, prone with the bipod I want to set it back up on the bench and see if we observe that same point of impact shift again. So let's get started. Okay 10 shots ready to go let's see what happens this time. Remember this is a different powder it's lower velocity we might see a little bit of slightly different point of impact maybe something like that shouldn't be a big deal Man, that felt good. 
and it was getting better as I went along. I think it was the more I shot, the more like kind of a little depressed spot in the dirt started forming and it was quicker to get back on target. So 0.68 inches so far. I just want to line up and shoot some more. Get more comfortable with this setup. Yeah, 10 more shots of the same. I'll tell you what I'll do though. Let's go ahead and break, kind of pull the feet out of the dirt. I am using the spiked feet. On my particular flavor of dirt here, I don't think it would really matter. This is soft and gooey and those rubber feet would soak down and grip pretty well, I'm sure. So earlier when I was talking about wishing this could go higher, it was more about just getting it higher in my shoulder pocket. Because I'm used to shooting sling support, which might be, you know, maybe at this level. Or at least at this level, I know what to do with my elbows. Like I'm, I remember old training and stuff. A little bit lower here, I'm almost, and whenever I get down lower on a gun like this, I definitely don't feel as comfortable. Okay, so our group definitely got a little bit bigger here, didn't it? 18. 1.07 inches with everything. What is it without this 18? 0.82. And lost a couple over here. Man, I'm extremely happy with that. That was awesome. Like I felt like I had excellent control. Like, really, really good control. Alright, 10 shots left. I want to go back to the standard front rest and rear bag. And see if we get a point of impact shift. Okay, 10 more shots. We're back in our comfy bag setup. The gun's had a few minutes to cool down and all that, so let's see what happens. Okay, I just scared myself to death. Had a double or a triple there. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had one of those. It, it has to do with my trigger finger and the way I normally rest things. Like if I don't have a little bit of pressure on the back of that grip so that my hand moves with the recoil, I'm just prone to that. So it's been a few years since we went through that drama. If you go far enough back on my channel, I think in particular was 6.5 Grindel. Kept having doubles and swapped in triggers and was blaming trigger manufacturers. And it just came down to me. Bad, bad technique. So that's good. That's a good reminder. If it was going to happen, today's a really good day for it to happen. These groups don't matter whatsoever. When you're gathering data during low development, that can be a serious setback, right? Wasted rounds. All right, let's finish off the mag. All right, 0.69 inch group. You know, so my immediate reaction is to say, oh, that's much better, that's much tighter than that last group where we used the monopod. But remember, that was a 20 shot group and our first 10 shots was 0.6 something. So the second 10 shots of that monopod group, we gotta take, you know, shooter fatigue, eye fatigue, barrel heat, all of that sort of stuff. But one thing I definitely won't deny is sitting down in a nice set of bags that you're used to, there's no comparison. It was much more work to shoot that monopod group than it was to shoot this this group here on bags can't remember if i mentioned it earlier but so one of the reasons why i wanted to test this is i think recoil management is is holding me back in 300 winchester magnum and i was thinking that shooting from a bipod prone on the ground might put me in a better better spot to handle 300 wind mag recoil so today's video is really kind of more about proving to myself that like i can shoot a pretty good group prone comparable to what i'm shooting from the bench so it's, it should be worth investigating. All right, that's it.
appreciate you guys joining me. I've messed around and taken so long. I'm not sure if this video will come out on Christmas or the day after Christmas, but whichever one, man, I either hope you're having a good Christmas or I hope you had a good Christmas, whichever one's appropriate. So that's it for now. See you guys next time.